God has an incredible purpose and plan and destiny for your life. Did you know you're destined to rule? You're destined to reign? You are destined to shine? So we say today, Jay, long live the king. Long live the queens out there. Because God is good and we're his kids. We are. And I love what you said about destined to shine. Because ladies and gentlemen, we have a phenomenal guest. Mary Shalhoub is in the house today, live. And I tell you what, she's got a great book called Destined to Shine. So if you are struggling in any area, you're wondering, where's my worth? Where's my value? You need to understand that when you understand your identity, it'll help you fulfill the purpose, call, and destiny on your life. And that's what you're going to get today. So I'm excited about it. That's right. And by watching today's program, you're going to learn how you can live out your God-given dreams with joy, with confidence, with purpose. You know, Jay, my son is 16, so I was at the DMV, the driver's, uh -oh. and, you know, yeah. we're getting the permit and all this stuff. And I have to give my license for, and the guy goes, are you Amy Schaefer on Hope today. Mm. <laughs> and I go, yes. So he's talking about television. I've watched it for so long. I can't get to church and I watch TV. And then the lady next to me said, can you write down all the details of how I can watch Cornerstone television? But I just thought, you know, when people tune in, they're hearing good news. They're Amen. hearing God thoughts. They're hearing scriptures. And so we're so honored to have you a part of our lives and a part of this network. You really are like family. They really are, and we're so glad that you have tuned in because you're going to get some exciting information on how to fulfill the call and destiny. You know, and to your point, people can always go to ctvn.org. Got all of our shows, yep. all of our outline, everything that's on there that you need. Go there, and you yes. can see all the different shows that CTVN offers. Yeah, and they could also watch this great, this is our, my most favorite segment of all. Insert eye roll. Let's go to Stump the Host. All right, here's question number one. Jay, are you ready? Pastor Jay. We're ready. Who made the golden calf while Moses was on Mount Sinai? The people of it. Israel. Aaron. Aaron made it? Aaron made for it. For sure. I, I'm pretty sure okay. of that. Final answer? Yes. Bam! Aaron, okay. <laughs> well, he, the people of Israel brought, brought. all the gold and stuff. And to, he made it. He okay, made it. okay. Yep. All right, all right, that was in Exodus 32, four through five. Look it up, read the story. All right, here's the next one. How many times did Jesus pray in the Garden of Gethsemane before his arrest? What do you think? Well, I was just there in oh, yeah, the Garden. That's right, yes, you Not were. Not that I walked his tracks, but um, I know for sure he went to pray, but then he came back to find his friends once. Sleeping. Went back twice. Sleeping. Three times, yep, I sleeping. think. Three times. <laughs> all sleeping. The disciples yep, failed that test. Three times. Yep. Final answer. Awesome. Yay. We got it. Matthew 26, verse 44. All right, last question. Let's We're do doing it. good, Jay. For whom did Jesus say it would be more tolerable on the day of judgment than for the city of Capernaum? Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, Sodom and Gomorrah. Final answer. Woohoo! Three in a row. Listen, I, I feel a little bad. Because I've given them a lot of flack because they've been making the hard questions. Now I feel like they're bringing me the elementary ones. Listen, big shout out to Cornerstone. It's a lot. Of fun. But I got, you know, we got to step our game up. We got to make sure the next time we're on, we are holding it down. But we did get three in a row, so I feel good about myself. I, I'm destined to shine, y'all. We're feeling confident. That's right. That's Full right. Of faith. Full of shining. Well, this is a new one here because now it's time for us to stump you, the viewer. In case you are new to stump the viewer, we get a chance now to ask you, the audience, a Bible trivia question. Are you ready? Because today is a special edition because everyone who guesses correctly will receive a prize. That means you and one randomly selected person who guesses correctly will win a $45 gift card. This is symbolic of our 45 years of preaching the gospel across these airwaves at Cornerstone Television. All you have to do is go to ctvn.org forward slash stump to submit your answers. Are you ready? Let's look at your question. What is the name? of the blind man Jesus healed in Jericho. Is it Zechariah, 
Timaeus, Barabbas, or Bartimaeus. Now, once again, go to ctvn.org forward slash stump to submit your answer. Everyone who guesses correctly will win a prize, and one random person wins $45 symbolic, Pastor Amy, 45 years of Cornerstone preaching the gospel Come on. of Jesus now, Christ. Now, you know, when I saw the a $45 gift card, I, it didn't register with me because usually you buy $25 or $50. But yes, we are celebrating, for, it's our 45th anniversary of being on air 24 hours a day, seven days a week to get the good news out, to get the gospel out, to bring hope and faith and joy right into your living room, your car, wherever you're at. So we're so grateful. So make yeah. sure you call and do not cheat. You cannot <laughs> Google the answer. You got to go from your heart. There is no wrong answer. We don't give no lifelines for us. You don't get any either. So go there, ctvn.org forward slash stump. Put in your answer while we take a short break. We'll be right back with Mary Shalhoub. God is calling you to do something significant in the earth for Him, regardless of your age, skill set, or perceived limitations. What's holding you back? When you give to support Cornerstone Television this month, let us bless you with Rick Renner's life-transforming book, Chosen by God. Every page will help you overcome your limited thinking and follow God's plan for your life. Rest assured, God has a plan and he will thoroughly prepare you to fulfill it if you'll say yes with all your heart. This book will thrill you with the possibilities that await because you are chosen by God. Request your copy when you give by calling 888-665-4483 or donate online at ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for helping us spread the gospel through life-changing programming like Rick Renner, Hope Today, Hard Questions, and more. To keep your favorite programs coming and receive Chosen by God, donate today. You know, it truly is because of faithful viewers and supporters like you that 45 years Cornerstone Television has been keeping this soul winning gospel preaching, gospel going across the air, bringing you shows like today. And our next guest is committed to helping believers live the authentic, victorious life that God has uniquely designed for them. Mary Shalhoub is a prophetic voice speaker and author, and in her new Destined to Shine series book number one. She shares how you can conquer the inner battles of the mind so you can align your mind with Christ and live victoriously. Mary, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you, thank you so much for having me here. Well, we are so honored to have you, and I believe this message is so profound because I believe that we are in an Isaiah 61 moment. Yes. Darkness is covering the earth, yes. gross darkness, but God said to his people, it's time to arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. So why has God put it upon your heart uh, to write this book for, our, for God's people? Well, it really started many years ago where I was, I was raised in a Christian home, but I was experiencing um, depression. I didn't know my purpose. I didn't know who I was in Christ. And I felt hopeless. And I just remember having sleepless nights. And one night I just collapsed on my bed and I had this profound encounter with the Lord. And from that moment, my life just changed. And the Holy Spirit began to mentor me in ways that I've never experienced before. And I began to know that I am here for a purpose. I began to know why God created me. And I was set out to just follow him with all my heart. And I really just wanted to allow people to experience the same thing that I went through. And that's why I wrote this book because I realized there are other Christians out there who feel the same way. Amen. Tell us a little bit about Kingdom Roar as well. How do those two go together? Okay, Kingdom Roar, uh, that's been on my heart for many years. It, um, it's something that's very personal to me. And I, I've discovered over the years, I found that people have uh, a hard time fitting in the traditional mold. You know, they have uh, amazing gifts and talents. They know they're called of God, um, but their voice has been like shut down or maybe their talents haven't been accepted. And so Kingdom Roar is really a platform where people can, like that can come uh, and get trained, um, where they can find accountability, where we can collaborate together to uh, 
express God's voice, you know, because each of us has a message inside of us. And that's really, you know, it goes hand in hand with Destined to Shine because we are called to shine and to use those gifts and talents to draw people unto Jesus. Amen. And you know, a lot of times we all have certain moments, burning bush experiences. Mm -hmm. I've had them, Pastor Amy's had them, mm -hmm. those moments that trigger Mm -hmm. us stepping into our destiny. What was that key moment for you that caused you to release Kingdom Roar and Destined to Shine? Well, it was really that, that moment when I went through that depression. Um, and I, from that time, I was invited to a home church and I met some pastors who just came back from uh, Toronto Airport Christian Fellowship where they were experiencing a revival <coughs> of the Father's love. And um, they were talking about how their hearts were healed and they, were, they came alive and they, they just, and I was like, I want to experience this. So I went there myself and um, I went to a conference and from there I went to a school of ministry and that's where, you know, I just began to know who I am. Um, you know, the people there began to speak into me and into, into my destiny and, um, from there is where everything kind of birthed. And I, I actually came home from there and I started a home uh, group. Mm. Um, and I was surprised it, it started with just two people and it ended up growing. And from there, I just knew I can help more people because there are a lot of people struggling with the same things that I did with identity. Amen. Let's talk about identity for a minute. Um, I have some real silver at home mm -hmm. and it's beautiful when it's polished, but yes. when it gets dull mm -hmm. and the shine is gone, yeah. it, what, what thoughts are dulling men and women shine? What, what, what thoughts are, are piercing their right. heart and their mind that are keeping them from being all that God's called them to be? I think it, it starts with them feeling maybe that they're not loved or they're not accepted or maybe they have thoughts of rejection or even things that, oh, well, it's too late or I don't have it in me. You know, God didn't, it's only for a special chosen people, right. but we're all called. Yes. And so, um, you know, we have to take those thoughts captive mm -hmm. and those lies that don't line up with scripture. Mm -hmm. And that's a process that we have to, go through. It takes, you know, um, discipline mm -hmm. and we have to believe what God says about us. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Well, I um, read the word. I meditate on the word. Mm -hmm. I, I worship. I, I focus on Jesus. Mm -hmm. I don't focus on what others are saying about me. You know, we're here to please God and we're here to do his will on earth. And I think we get so caught up, especially if you deal with issues of rejection, um, you know, we get caught up in trying to please man, trying to please people. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where it, that'll hinder us from really walking out uh, who we're called to be and shining uh, the light of Jesus through mm -hmm. us. Do you think that many times when we're looking for acceptance, we're actually from other people, mm -hmm. we're looking for the Father's love. We are actually looking for someone to validate the authentic personality of who we've been created to be. Right. Who better to go to than the Father to do that? Why do you think so many people struggle with that? And what can they do to really lock in and realize they've been fearfully and wonderfully made? Yeah, I do uh, think people have a hard time receiving the Father's love for many reasons. Um, first of all, we live in a fallen world and we all go through you know, trauma or difficult times. And sometimes what happens when we go through that, um, we might blame God or we might say, where was he? Why wasn't he here? And that put, that puts God at a, the father at a distance. You know, it's, it's hard to receive love from him when we feel like he wasn't there for us. Um, another reason why may be because we don't think we're worthy. We've made mistakes in our lives and we don't think we're wor worthy of receiving such a love. And, um, Lastly, another reason is because as humans, we naturally project our um, experiences with our earthly father onto our mm -hmm. heavenly father. Mm -hmm. So if our earthly father was absent, we think, oh, Father God's absent. Mm -hmm. Or if he's you know, controlling or abusive, you know, we project that image onto our heavenly father. 
And so we need to get healed of those father wounds to see God rightly. We need to know who he is. We need to study the word and, and believe who, that he is a good, good father. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you mentioned about the father wounds. That's so huge in a lot of people's lives. Uh, talk to us a little bit more about that. How does your book go into um, how we can find healing uh, from those areas, whether it's the father's wounds, whether it's uh, not feeling worthy. How does your book assist us so we can really lock in and get the identity we need to have? Well, we, we, the book covers things like lies that we've believed that are not you know, in line with the scripture. Um, also, it, I, I, I walk them step by step how to receive your acceptance your affirmation from God. You know, so many people in this world were, again, we're looking to other sources, especially the young people. Yeah, that's right. You know, there's an identity crisis yeah. going on, and, you know, they're looking to basketball players or football players or, you know, Hollywood stars, and, or, or even just to be accepted, you know, amongst their peers. Um, but we need to look to God the Father and so we, we walk, I walk them through that in the book, um, conquering those lies, how to take them captive, how to believe uh, God's word. You know, it, Psalms 139 says that we are fearfully Amen. and wonderfully made. And, you know, he wrote a book about our days even before we were born. So we're here for a purpose. Yes. Amen. yes. So let's go a little step further. We understand our identity. Mm -hmm. How does identity help us to fulfill our purpose? Once we find that, how does it bring us into that? Well, when, we, when we know who we are in Christ, then we're in right relationship with him and God begins to speak to us. We begin to hear you know, who we are. We begin to discover those, those hidden gifts and talents. We all have them. You know, I meet people and they say, well, I don't really have a talent. Well, you just haven't really tapped in. You know, the Lord will show you. And will you begin to discover things about you that you didn't even know? That's what happened to me. That were were in me. And as we start walking those out and hearing God's voice, it's really important to know how to hear God's voice. And I, I teach a class on that as well. But hearing Him, you know, having that relationship, um, the Holy Spirit will reveal who He's created you to be, and so that you can fulfill your destiny. Amen. Amen. You know, and I know there's a lot of people out there, people battle with being worthy. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we've fallen short. Mm -hmm. We've made mistakes. Maybe we come from the quote unquote wrong side of the tracks. Mm -hmm. Maybe we have a past that we don't want people to know about. What do you say to someone that says, I'm not worthy? Or maybe they were in ministry and they mm -hmm. fell short and yeah. now their name is tarnished. Yeah. If I'm not, if I'm feeling feelings of not being worthy, mm -hmm. what do you say to that? I would say your worth is not in what you accomplish. It's not in what you have done, but your worth is in God. He um, created you in his very image. Your value is in that. And not only that, he sent his one and only son to die for you and, and to suffer so that you can have a relationship with him here on earth and be with him eternally. That is where our worth is. Amen. Amen. You know, a lot of times we battle with feelings. I don't know how it is mm -hmm. for you as ladies being more emotional. You know, we, we, yeah. women are brooders. They brood over everything, you know. That's, yeah. that's, that's how we, they brood over things. That's why you guys are mothers. You yes. know, you have the ability to nurture and all that. Oh, yeah. You know, a mama, yes. if, if sun falls down. Helicopter. <laughs> yep, just hanging over, just everything. hovering. Yeah. And we're more like jets. You know, we are on our way. But the reason why I mention that is because a lot of people battle with their feelings. Yeah. You know, so we read the word, yeah. we identify it, mm -hmm. but then we're battling with my feelings are contradictory yeah. to what the truth says. How do you break through yeah. those feelings to where your mind gets renewed? Yeah, I uh, struggled with that myself and it's still do, you know, um, and we tend to sometimes make decisions based on feelings, but we need to make decisions based on what God tells us to do. And so... Um, you know, renewing our mind is, again, taking those thoughts captive um, and just really believing what God says and, um, you know, focusing on Jesus and, and allowing Jesus to transform us. You know, 2 Corinthians 3.18, you 
you know, uh, we, we focus on Jesus, who is the glory of the Lord, and we're transformed. As we focus on Him and the Word of God, we are transformed from glory Amen. to glory. Mm -hmm. And then at that, through that transformation, it's our spirit man begins to dominate, not our feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, as a, as a God chick, um, <laughs> let's talk real quick about comparison. Oh, yeah. Because if anything is going to yes. suck the shine right off yeah. of you, it's yeah. when you're comparing yourself yeah. um, to yeah. other women. Yeah. And it's just in our face all the time. Mm -hmm. We open up our social media. It's just right there. Yeah. Person after person, mm -hmm. meal after meal, family after family, <laughs> ministry yes. after ministry. How can we take back our God-given brightness and light in this world we're being bombarded by images of what we should look like and what we should be yeah um that's a real issue <laughs> today um i think again we we need to hear what the father says over us and that you know we are fearfully and wonderfully made and really getting our affirmation from him mm -hmm. and the more we focus on our relationship with the lord versus you know you know wh who what are we mirroring what are we looking at are we looking at social media all day mm -hmm. or are we you know looking to the lord and right. that's you know that's where confidence grows yep. that's where you go you you don't compare yourself mm -hmm. with others um i know you know, rejection's a big issue, and people who struggle with rejection, they want to feel accepted by other people. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we have to focus on the Lord and who He set, calls us to be and who He says we are. Mm -hmm. And in that, we can find that confidence within. Mm -hmm. And then it's like those words don't even matter. You know, right. people can say things or people can do things or not do things, and those things don't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. But it's a process we have to walk out. It really is. And it's so important that we understand that thoughts always lead to our feelings. Yes. A lot of people say, I can't help the way that I feel. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Mm -hmm. You can <laughs> help the way you feel because your feelings are direct correlation to how we think. Yeah. So I want you to take a minute right now, and we just want to minister to some people because I believe there's people out there that are mm -hmm. battling, mm -hmm. they're struggling. Uh, I believe it's the time to arise and shine, mm -hmm. but maybe their feelings are telling them they're unworthy. Maybe they're dealing with some father issues or whatever it is that they might be. Take a minute, just minister to the people in the homes and just encourage them for a moment that God is for them and that their best days are still yet to come. Okay. Well, I wanna just speak to you at home and just say that you are worthy. You are loved, deeply loved by the Father. It doesn't matter what you have done in the past. The Lord loves you, He cares for you. You have a destiny and a purpose. He's calling you to draw yourself unto him, to focus in on him. And we just, we come against any lies, yes. any thoughts that are contrary to the word of God in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And we just say, this is your time yes. to arise and shine. It is not too late. You have not gone too far mm -hmm. to come to the Father and know who you truly are because there is a need for you here on this earth mm -hmm. and God will reveal that to you. And so I thank you, Lord, for yes. everyone who is watching. I thank you for the purpose and the destiny you have upon their mm -hmm. lives. In Jesus' name, we give you all the glory. Amen. 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 I, I love the, the thank you for your prayer and the ministry. Um, I thank you. I, I'm, I love the subject and topic of identity mm -hmm. and who you are. It's brutal because if you, if you know who you are, wow, you're a force to be reckoned with on the yes. earth. If you're struggling to find who you are, mm -hmm. um, you're, you're a force to be reckoned with with the enemy because yeah. he will play with you. You'll be like a puppet to him. He'll toy with your mind. He'll jack up your thoughts. He'll send people along your path to tell you, who you are, who you're not. Mm -hmm. And I, while you're talking, I kept thinking of something my mom says all the time. And she says, you know, Amy, God doesn't have grandkids. Mm. Mm. He doesn't Amen. have Amen. grandkids. Amen. He has kids. Amen. He has sons and he has daughters of God. And, and you know, talking about that sort of that orphan spirit. I mean, you've got to know I've been adopted. I, I'm his kid. Yeah. I, I prayed the prayer. I received him 
to be my father, to be my Lord. So that's a game changer for me. When you do that, it's, it's a done deal. You're, you're now officially a daughter of the king. Amen. What would you say to somebody, just real quick, that's struggling with an orphan spirit? They, don't, they need to make the decision to become a son and daughter of God. And once they've made that decision, they need to walk in that Godfidence. Yes. You know? Yes, you know, you are a son, you are a, a daughter, you have an inheritance. I mean, you belong to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And uh, that is where you find your true identity. That is where you know who you are. And so be rest assured that God loves you. God um, is calling you unto him. The Father has his arms wide open and he's embracing right. you. You yes. are his beloved child yes. and you are deeply, deeply loved. Amen, amen. Well, Mary, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, go and get her book, Destined to Shine. I believe that it will be a blessing to your life. This is your time, season, and moment to rise up and to take a hold of all that God has for you. The devil's always gonna bring fear. He's gonna try to bring discouragement. He's gonna tell you that you're not worthy, but you gotta go back and find your identity in the blood. You gotta go find it in Jesus Christ. You were crucified with him. When Peter saw Jesus, yeah. he saw himself. Thy name shall no longer be called Simon, but thy name shall be called Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. This is a time season moment for you to see Jesus for who he is. Because when you see him for who he is, you will now know who you are and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Really, your identity is the key to unlock the destiny that God has for you. And it's found only in Jesus Christ. And I think that's just so powerful, Pastor Amy. Yeah. And I want to remind you also, because we did a little bit ago, Play the stump the viewer at home. And so go to your screen there, ctvn.org forward slash stump to submit your answers. And everyone who guesses will get a prize and one random person will win a $45 gift card to commemorate 45 years. Year anniversary. And I just pray for you today that you will be like my own sons and daughter. That what's mine is theirs. They open the fridge, they take what they need, they sit at the table. If they need clothes, they've got it. If they need shelter, they've got it. If they need comfort, they have it. It's yours. Everything that I have is theirs. But for you, it's better. Everything God has is yours. He is in covenant with you and you're a son and a daughter. We'll see you tomorrow.